Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus and in this tutorial we are going to create a donut in Houdini. So let's start off with a geonode and call it 01body. Dive inside by double clicking and create a torus. Now the torus, uh, we can play around with its radii and also its resolution. And I turn this up quite a bit and try to make it look quadratic, more or less. These kinds of polygons. And um, we can use a mountain stop to make the surface more irregular. Now let's lower the number of octaves so it's not too high frequent. And if you're unhappy with the scale of this effect, you can change it from very low to very high. And you can get lots of variations by middle mouse clicking and just offsetting this. But I like the original shape. All right, next we will um, just make sure it's sitting right on the floor. So you can use an expression called minus dollar y min. So y min is the lowest point of our geometry and by minus we're pushing it upwards so it's sitting right on the floor. So in order to refer to this state later, we can define a null and call it out. Now press L to sort it and spacebar H to get the central view and use U to go out. And now we're creating a new geo node, this time called chocolate. Inside we want to refer to the old node and by clicking on this icon we can go to the old out. And before we can apply any chocolate layer, we first want to create a mask for it. So create a point pop, call it mask and dive it side. Now a point warp looks quite intimidating at first, but in procedure modeling it's mostly about its point positions and its normals. In this case we use the dot product of the normal against an up vector. And just to visualize this, you can connect this to the color. So you see a gradient from minus 1 to 1. And because we don't want negative values, we just clamp them. So now it's stuck between 0 and 1. And we didn't want to create any colors, so let's just press Y to cut this off again. But instead we want to export an attribute called density. And this density will be used by the scatter node. So by standard the scatter node is doing a fairly uniform distribution of points. But we can change this by activating density. Next we want, don't want to force a total count but rather a density scale. So this relates to the area size. And also we don't want the um, relaxing to be too regular, so we can play around with this until it's looking uh, more natural. And we can go always back to this later, but now let's just test what it looks like when we create a volume based off of these points. So VDB from particles will translate this into a vector field, which looks quite blobby at first. But let's up the resolution and decrease the point radius scale to 0 0.04 or maybe 6. And you can even give this maybe a bit a larger radii and to get rid of this blobby look you can smooth this quite a bit. So by increasing the radius and possibly playing around 
with iterations you can get various results and this would be a thick layer of chocolate and again please make sure you play around with density scale with the point radius scale if you like with the overall resolution you can go down to 001 but this shows the blobs a bit more so I like a, a little rough resolution and um, we will create two branches out of this the first one will be the volume so we just write out volume and the other variant will be a mesh so in order to turn this into a mesh we convert it back to polygons now this is our chocolate layer again if you feel like this could be smoother just make sure you play around with these or use a different algorithm this looks quite nice actually okay let's go out with you and now we want to um, create a new node called geo but we rename it to sticks now before we dive in there let's go back to chocolate and steal the mask node because this is quite useful let's copy this go into sticks and after merging with the latest uh, out mesh we just paste this mask and we already have the top um, again masked if you want to see it again it's working like this so the bottom sides don't get any uh, values but the top ones get uh, rather yeah high ones so we can now scatter um, our sticks on there so again using density and we just say scatter now again we don't need a total count we rather work with density but that's up to you and the relax iterations can be kept like this because you don't necessarily want to uh, those things to intersect but which is really vital make it sure to use the density attribute okay now what's missing is some normal directions so when you look at this surface we of course have some implicit normals but we can make them explicit by just saying normal and switching these to points that way if we look at the scattered points they have the normals too and these normals can be used to place sticks on them so let's just create a line and copy these to the points now you'll see that these kind of lines do all sorts of uh, weird things they, their orientation is not really what we like and we can of course change their direction here so now they stick in the air like hair but instead we want to control um, their direction with a custom normal so first of all let's do something rather simple let's create an attribute randomize and you see here it creates um, unique colors for each point but we rather would like to define a random scale which is just has one component and we want this to be well half the size or the full size something in between and the global scale is probably easier to control so these will be the sugar sticks on top and now how can we make sure that this is not standing right on the surface but rather lying and this is where a bit of mathematics can help us so we will just use another point warp and um, just create a cross product 
of the normal. So take the normal, say cross, and instead of using this up vector, we will create a random vector based off of the point number. So this would be a normal and the cross product will create a perpendicular line all around these normals. So you would just stick this there and you see all of a sudden these kind of sticks lay flat on the ground. Now what's the problem with this? The problem is that the random value we get here is always between 0 and 1 and this is why all these sticks point to the, a half of the direction. If you really want random directions you should fit this value from 0 to 1 to minus 1 to positive 1. This is truly random directions lying directly on the surface. Now let's leave this and just call this normals. The randomization is basically creating P scale. It's just better to name those to keep the overview. And of course the density seems a bit high, so we can just reduce this and until there are hardly any collisions left. Right, next we want to um, just blend all the other geometries out and really focus on our little sticks here. Um, these are of course too straight, so we would resample them to give them more points. Just look inside the point view and you should find a good value depending on the length. I want a few points on those lines and we can just jitter them. Jittering is giving each point a random offset. Should be really tiny, maybe 0.02 and uh, these maybe a bit more. And these can be resampled again to have really smooth subdivisions. So 0.01 or maybe 0.02 will give us these kind of noodle-ish looks. And in order to give them random colors, we can also go back to the point branch and here just say attribute randomize and this is giving random colors but the problem with randomness is that it's not controlled at least not now so let's do something more clever let's delete the random node and create another point warp which we will call color now inside we again create a random value based off the number, excuse me, the point number. And instead of just feeding this into color, we use something called a ramp parameter. And this way we get more control over the color output. Let's go up and now turn these colors into constants this one as well and now you can basically define your own colors for the sticks so lots of white ones means moving the slider to the left and then you can just define your very own color palette Alright, so these would be the colors that can basically appear. And now in order to turn this into a solid geometry, like a closed mesh, you can just use the poly wire. 
and the poly wire can do little worms out of this and you should always take care of the mesh so let's activate the wireframe view and give eight subdivisions which is way better for subdividing those sticks all right so this looks rather nice you can of course optimize this if needed and um, maybe spend it a little more of those if you're unhappy with the distribution just change the seed value you probably know this and now let's um, really go out but only after we set another out node great so these are the sticks now how can we make the sticks and the chocolate layer interact because usually the chocolate will get some dents here so we create a, another geo node and this time call it 04 choco dents so inside we refer again to the chocolate layer but this time it's volume so out volume is correct and we will also need the sticks so let's grab those so there should be sticks out and these need to be converted into volumes so vdb from polygons should do it this time make sure it's really 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 high resolution so 0.01 and this volume can be, um, I think, resampled. So well, let's look at VDB resample. And we will match it to this one. So they have now the same resolution. If I would change these, this one would um, take it over. Now we can combine these. Uh, this is a bit like a boolean operator so put both in and now we just say i would like to okay this would have done also the resampling um a to match b then we don't need this and now we can say we would like to use a different operation namely sdf difference which now puts holes where those sticks are. Now let's say we want to increase the distance a little. We can use the VDB reshape SDF and just make them a bit thicker. You can tell already that this is influencing the size. So let's just keep this rather small. We just want a subtle effect and also smooth the overall shape really be smooth at least for testing we can see whether this looks good or not so a few iterations to make it look a bit smoother we can also see how it turns out if we reference it the other way around and now let's convert this to a mesh so to polygons and this looks very very sharp but we have to see it in conjunction so maybe it looks more convincing with the sticks on it and now it's time to deactivate the original chocolate layer and I find this uh, way too strict, so we need more, we don't need smoothing. And let's see how this works. This looks better, but I think it could be smoother. So let's just see what we can do here by 
increasing the offset. And if we smooth, we should do so with a slight uh, bigger radius. Mm, this is shrinking too much, so maybe let's try a different algorithm. Okay, this is even worse. Let's look at this again. And yeah, this really feels like it's sunk into the chocolate. And if you're unhappy with it, you at least know which sliders to play around with. And also there's still another possibility uh, if you think this is rather to be solved on polygon level, there's also a smooth node which we can always use to smoothen up the geometry a bit more. Maybe like this. Great. So this would be our chocolate layer. And now uh, one thing we shouldn't forget about is the floor. So zero zero floor is just a really large circle or rather a disk. We can make it 100 units and append an out node. So maybe we can do something with this as well. So let's think about scattering some um, some sticks on the floor, but before that, let's just say I would like to see this procedural donut right after saving with bigger sticks. So we can just leave our view here and go into sticks and say what would this look like with a few more millimeters maybe like this or maybe like 0.02 that looks better and then we could just uh, smoothen the dents a little more but you know what it's okay so now how could we put some sticks on the floor as well so this shouldn't be too hard right you just go to the sticks up here and merge the circle apply a normal just to make sure yep so it's good that we saved just at the right time maybe do something a little different so it doesn't crash again so let's put this to polygon look at everything in conjunction and let's not make it that huge give it a bit of resolution and reverse it because now it's a polygon structure okay again into sticks now let's just merge this take the floor and just hold down alt to copy the normals and what we can do now is we can also scatter some points here um, really without relaxing them too much and then we just merge it before we go on, so we take both scatters and just bring them there. <laughs> so 
So this seems to uh, bring quite a bit of calculation inside. But look at this, isn't that fantastic? Now we really have this going on everywhere. So not much work and quite some effect. We can also increase the circle, but then we just have to make or take into consideration that it's calculating a bit. And also just to make sure, we could also lift these points slightly because they are a bit sticking in the floor. And um, I wouldn't necessarily want this, so you could just say, let's cheat a little and lift them up. And by the way, if you want to avoid long calculations, just switch it to manual. For the time being, correct this by, hmm, if at all, a centimeter. Yeah, it's a little better. And then go out. All right, let's save it again. And now um, for illuminating this, I use an environment and I guess a HDRI should bring fast results. So we can pick one of these and just create a Mantra PBR node, set up a camera, lock it and give it at least 80 millimeters, I'd say, zoom out a little, excuse me, uh, move out and um, then we can do our first test rendering. I think we will lower the resolution to half and just hit render for seeing a result. And yeah, this should be it. Looks rather funny <laughs> because it's so regular. Okay, this looks really dramatic, but I don't really mind. And um, Don't relax it. And now we can just go to the material context and just give it some some new materials. So we can use the principal shader and um, don't use the point colors for the chocolate. And maybe there's a chocolate actually. Let's use milk chocolate. And apply this to chocolate. In order to raise the quality, you can also set the chocolate to render polygons at subdivision. And next would be the body or the sticks. So let's go on with the sticks. So another principal shader. This time we are going to use the point color. Just make sure to put the base color to one so they don't get tinted. And we can make them rather reflective, I think. And maybe not that reflective not too rough, not too reflective. Let's just see what this looks like and just apply the sticks material to the sticks. Now the chocolate is of course not active so we kind of can get rid of this. What I meant was the chalk dents and those can also be subdivided again. So while this is calculating, we can also um, give a material to the body. And for this to work nicely, we can also apply a bit of a color gradient here. 
So let's just leave the rendering alone for the time being and go back to our body. And inside there, we can just apply a custom gradient. So point warp. Let's switch to scene view and now we can just have a look at um, just the donut alone. Call this color and grab the bounding box. So it's called relative to bounding box based on the world position. And this will look like this. And yeah, we only want the gradient, uh, the second vector component basically is going from, uh, from down to top, from bottom to top. And this can be used to again apply a ramp parameter which is called color. Now if you like you can just tint the donut and make it dark on the bottom, brighter on top and darker here. And there are a number of sliders for really giving this the desired look. It shouldn't be all white, of course, but you can be the artist here. I will just show you the concept. Maybe something like this looks a little more convincing than a pure white color. And this should also be visible in rendering. So we can create a, another principal shader, which this time is again set to all ones in the base color using point color. This time it should be very rough, not really reflective. And we also apply this one called body and move it on top of the body node. Now, of course, you can also give the floor a nice shader. shader. Um, maybe we make it pure white. So principal shader core is because we don't need the presets. I don't, wouldn't want to go all white, so it's not getting too bright. Maybe use metallic and call this floor. So as soon as we apply this to the floor, we should see some changes here. Let's hit render. And we can also activate a bit of um, depth. Um, by going to the mantra node, we can say we would like to have under rendering uh, depth of field. And now we only need to tell the camera to please. Ah, okay, this is due to the metallic. <laughs> um, to please just um, give us some depth of field effect. So you would just go here and I personally like to look at this in scene view because there's a interesting way of cutting off everything we see uh, in the far clipping. And as soon as things appear again, there you see where it's being cut off and I want the sharpness to be round about here maybe 8.5 and we can just say okay focus distance would be 8.5 to get started and a really shallow f-stop now let's see what this looks like when we render this out again 
All right, now this is uh, the result. Um, it's just a very speedy run through the creation of a donut generator in Houdini. So now you are free to play with it and create lots of variations. Thank you for watching.